it, there is a further possibility that if you have a simulated civilization, that that simulated civilization might, inside the simulation, develop the technology to run its own simulations. And you might then have a kind of nested simulation with simulation inside the simulation. You might have many levels of simulation. But that's an optional extra. It doesn't The basic simulation argument doesn't presuppose that. It's just that if you extrapolate the kind of computing power that an advanced civilization will eventually have, and you figure if they would use some of that immense computing power to running simulations, they could run an astronomical number of them. So therefore, in that scenario, most people with our kinds of experiences would be among the simulated people, because for each original history, there would then be maybe millions or, or, or billions of simulated histories. So if that were the case, we should believe the simulation hypothesis. But the simulation argument doesn't imply the simulation hypothesis. It just says that there are these three possibilities, one of which is true, leaving it open which one of them. It's also possible that we will all fail to reach this level of technological maturity, that all civilizations at our current stage of development go extinct for some other reason. Maybe there is some advanced technology such that when you discover it, you invariably use it to destroy yourself. Or there might be some other reason why, why civilizations will not get through to this level of technological maturity. But if they do, and if they're still interested in that stage at using some of their resources to producing these ancestor simulations, then most people like us would be living in this simulation. So the simulation argument imposes a constraint on what you can coherently believe about the future and about our place in the world.